Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. I'm back here at Moss Family Chevrolet and we're here to ask a question. Should Chevrolet be killing off the Impala? Because what we have is this 2019 Chevrolet Impala with the Midnight package on it. So let's talk a little bit about Impala history. Would you believe the Chevrolet Impala first hit the streets all the way back in 1958, if you could believe that? Over the years, such an iconic car, it disappeared, but you know what? They brought it back in the 1990s, that Impala SS. I remember those back when I was in college and whatnot. And over time, the Impala has come back, gone away, come back around. Well, guess what? They're saying that now it's time for it to disappear again. The question is, should Chevrolet have tried to have done some kind of redivision because, or excuse me, redesign, because the way you see this Impala is basically the same since 2014. But you know what? One thing that I do really love about this particular one is that midnight package. And I did have the opportunity to drive an Impala for a very long period of time. And it actually quite surprised me. And that's the reason why I'm here at Moss Family Chevrolet to ask this question. So let's go ahead and dive into this 2019 Chevrolet Impala, that midnight edition. So you can see what's going on with the front fascia. The headlight design still looks good, but it is getting a little long in the tooth. This is something that with a redesign, they could have really brought some nice 21st century LED lighting, maybe slimmed it up a little bit. Down here, you do have some fake venting. The thing is, is that you can see the lighting down here and a little bit of the shiny chrome. If they would have just kept this flat and not try to make it look like any kind of grill or anything, I think it would have looked a lot better or make the fog lamps really large down here. I think that would have filled in that space nicely. Now, as we come across the front, I still, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciating what they got going on here. So you got the blacked out Chevrolet bow tie. That's part of that midnight package. I like the horizontal chrome slots on top and on the bottom. And you know what? They gave it a nice little angular design, especially when it sweeps out to each corner. That, I really think they hit the nail on the head. Now, as we get up onto the hood, love the body lines on this hood. Really almost like muscle car-ish. And it would have been nice to have seen, you know, them take this to the next level. You know, redo the SS and really just keep bringing that magic. But this is Bon Voyage for the Impala. Now, as we come around the bend, these are those Midnight Edition specific wheels. I actually think they look good. Brushed aluminum, nice gloss black, silver bow tie. I think that was smart. Just little touches, because I think if they would have went gold, it would have looked not right. But this is a 19 inch wheel. It's a 245, so that is the width, and it's a 45 uh, series sidewall on it. So it's a good looking setup with this Impala. As we go down the side, they did take the nice black paint and put it on the mirrors. You have your slim and trim turn singles, a little bit of chrome, because remember the Impala, especially when you go back to the originals, so much chrome. Nice to see a little bit. Of, it's not overly done. It's not like a Impala Denali where it's going to blind you with any kind of sun. It's just a nice little touches of shiny bit. You have the Impala badge on the side. As we go down, you can see nice blending of the black with the shiny chrome on the door handles. And then coming to the rear, I really like this rear section here, especially because of the way the trim is like a nice brushed aluminum look to it. And it really comes to a nice shape. I think it was very smart to widen the material because if they didn't do that, it would look a little awkward. Looks good. There's that iconic Impala badge. So much history. And like I said, for me, when they brought back the Impala SS in the 1990s, that car was actually pretty tough and uh, cool to see rear wheel drive Impala. Out back, once again, midnight package, you're going to get this trunk lid spoiler. Another thing that I want to just show off, I'm going to have Tom kind of pop up and show you. Look at how they actually put some design into the rear trunk. They could have just kept that flat. I like the way they did that. It really gives it a unique look. And then out back, this being the premier uh, top dog edition. So you got some nice badging. You got your V6 badging and then dropping down simple. You know, they're, they're vacuum stylish. So I, I wish they did have a little bit more character, but you know what? I'm going to hold off the zonk. It looks clean. The only thing I don't like is with the V6 badge, I wish they would have put that down here. I don't know why that's on the top of the trunk 
rather than somewhere a little bit lower. So I am gonna zonk that, but I do love the Impala badge embossed into this rear chrome shiny bit on the trunk. But why don't we go ahead, pop the hood, and see what kind of power plant we're talking about with this Impala. All right, guys, we got the hood popped on the Impala. You can see the one massive hood strut, very nicely done. Underneath all that plastic, which it really isn't the best looking engine cover, but I will throw them a bone for actually putting the Chevrolet bow tie. That does look nice. And it does have a little design to it, but just a little bit of color would be nice on there. Maybe some silver, but underneath that plastic cover is a 3.6 liter V6, 305 horsepower, 264 pound-feet of torque. If you were hoping for rear-wheel drive, you better hope and pray a little bit more because guess what? This is front-wheel drive. It weighs around 3,850 pounds. It's all mated to a six-speed automatic transmission, zero to 60 in six seconds, quarter mile in 14.8 at 97 miles an hour, and a top speed of 149 miles per hour. If you're wondering about MPGs, 18 in the city, and then you're looking at in the 20s on the highway, mid 20s on the highway, you know, maybe that would have been the thing really to make the Impala still stick around as if it was rear wheel drive. I think uh, from a driving standpoint, that really would have been the right way to go. But why don't we go ahead, fire up this Impala before there are no more to be found. All right, guys, we're inside the 2019 Chevy Impala. The last time we'll be doing one of these as they're disappearing for 2019. Now, if you're wondering, Joe, I'm actually liking what you're showing. It has a great look to it. I'm thinking about an Impala. What's the price on this one? The price MSRP is around $39,000. Let's see what you get to the door panels. Now, I like what they actually have done with the door panels. You get some very nice soft material both at the top of the door panel and the armrest. I love the contrast stitching, and I think that they added just enough shiny chrome bit to it to where it really breaks up the sea of black on the door. But very, very comfortable door to rest your arm on, whether it's the armrest or the top portion of the door. When you come to the dash, same soft material. And you know what? I'm still liking, even though this hasn't had a major redesign since 2014, I'm liking this split level dash. It gives it a nice classy touch, especially with the smoked uh, gray that they got going on and that contrast stitching. It's amazing what contrast stitching will do. Where I am gonna zonk is around these AC vents. Let me show you. So here it's soft, hard plastic around the AC vents. I wish they would have put some different material, maybe this nice smoke gray or maybe even some silver, some brushed aluminum, sort of like we have here around the gauge uh, pod. You have a nice size infotainment system, navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You can check your weather and everything else. Watch this. Ready for James Bond style? You press this button, up this goes, and you have a nice lockable storage cubby for anything that you have that's valuable that you don't want anybody to get their sticky fingers on. This way you can valet the car. You can even put your phone in here and keep it hooked up to a USB. And the way it works is you actually set a code in the screen to open it back up so your belongings can be safe in there. Nice touch. You got the home button, takes you right back. No fake buttons. Some of that harder black plastic, which I, I wish they would have done something different here. But you know what? You get dual climate control, push button start, and then you can see this like faux wood design going on. I like the cover. Bam, wireless charging. That's what you want. You get it with the Impala. Push this down. More of that faux wood. You got two cup holders. This is your key fob. It is push button start. You got your buttons on the back, Chevy bow tie, but you also have your switch blade. When somebody's ready to carjack you, you can take care of them with this key fob. No, that's for when the, batter, the battery in this thing is dead. You can still open up the doors. This is controlling your six speed automatic transmission, heated and ventilated seats. Yes. They put it on an Impala. Why are they getting rid of this car? Right there, it's worth its weight in gold. A Little bit of a cubby, nice soft. I'm telling you, the leather and everything, the stitching is really soft. You open this up by pushing that button. You get a nice tray for candy corn. Great on a long trip, I promise you that. You could take it out and actually rest it. If your passenger's hogging the candy corn, you could actually rest it on your lap. In here, you do have some more connectivity, two USBs and a 12 volt. 
and it's a pretty good amount of space. When you're done with your tray, you close it up. These seats are great. Love the look. Heated and ventilated, like I said. Great stitch work. The piping, they're comfortable. And obviously full electric and feel great. They form to your body very well. And I really like the bottom portion especially. You have a nice light um, headliner in here, kind of just brighten everything up a little bit. I'm six feet tall. I feel cool as a cucumber, especially with the ventilated seats. But why don't you come over to the business end? I'll show you behind the wheel of this Impala. All right, guys, business end behind the wheel. My first zonk is the steering wheel itself. It's not very attractive whatsoever. Whoever designed this, I don't know what they got going on. But Midnight Edition should have a different horn button. Remember, you're getting those blacked out items. But thickness of the wheel is spot on. And the gauge instrumentation, lots of analog, but it works. You have an analog tack, analog speedometer. You got your coolant and your fuel gauge. And then what's nice is you could toggle through a plethora of different readings on that nice digital display, your oil life. You got your tire pressure, average speed, coolant temp, all that good stuff. So that's very nice to see. I just wish they would have done something a little bit nicer on this wheel. On the midnight package, the last thing I want to show you, check it out, race pedals, vroom vroom. Let's go ahead and drag race at our next light. So you're going to get those brushed aluminum pedals. They look cool. I just wish they would have gave us a brushed aluminum dead pedal. I don't know why so many companies do that um, where you get the cool looking pedals but not a dead pedal. Comfortable though as can be. Let's check out the back seat and see how your passengers are going to be loving the Impala. All right, guys, I tell you, a full size four door car, you get in one and you're really got lots of space. Here I am, tons of room back here. Seats are so comfortable. I really feel like you could go for a long drive very easily. Front seats, totally wrapped in leather. Thank you, Chevrolet, for doing that. Nice felt line pocket. You got your rear AC vents, even a home power source and your 12 volt. I guess if you want to gripe at something, they could have put a USB, but you know what? With a home power source and a 12 volt, I think they got you covered. Plenty of headroom, even with the sloping roof. Like you would think that you would have less headroom, but they did a great job at keeping the headroom. Let's look at the armrest. Yes, horizontal cup holders. That's what I like to see because look at all this space that you have for your uh, elbows and arms and whatnot. But why don't we go ahead check out the trunk and see how usable this Impala is. All right, guys, probably one of the biggest arguments, you know, many car manufacturers moving away from cars because they say you can't put as much stuff like you can in an SUV. Let's see what we got. We raise this up, check it out. This is ridiculous. The amount of room in the back of this Impala, even with the seats up, is plentiful. You put the seats down, that 60-40 split, even gonna be more so. What I'm probably most impressed about is the opening. The opening to this trunk is ginormous. I mean, I can easily get into the trunk. That's how easy it is. I mean, and you know what? I think I'm going to. So just to show you, I mean, come on. It's that easy to put a Joe Rady in the back of the trunk of an Impala. Why do you need an SUV? But why don't we go ahead? It's about that time. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's take this Impala for a spin. All right, guys, we're leaving Moss Family Chevrolet, Tampa, Florida. We're in the 2019, the last this is it. The last hurrah for the Chevrolet Impala. Been around since 1958. It's gone through some different, you know, designs and setups. This one, I'm telling you, it's actually very surprising how well they drive. Very comfortable, but also very responsive as well. I do like the feedback coming from the front end. This is a front wheel drive car. Um, steering could be a little bit heavier, but remember, this is a, a luxury style sedan. Uh, and we showed that definitely with the rear seats. A lot of room back there. Really soaks up the bumps ever so nicely. Um, and just really a, a easy car to drive, that's for sure. Now, I do like with the midnight package, uh, you know, being a midnight edition, you do get those extra touches. And uh, for a price point of $39,000, I think you are getting a lot of car for the money, especially when you look at incentives and rebates on these things. But really just a very calm, comfortable car to drive. The seats feel like lazy boys. They're nice and comfortable, they're supportive, um, and they really, at least my body, uh, they fit my body really well, and I'm six feet tall. The placement of everything is pretty good. I feel like where I'm sitting though, the distance to the screen is a little far because it is slanted forward, but not getting any glare on the screen, which is nice. 
AC controls are very easy to get to. Um, and of course you do have the Game Boy buttons on the steering wheel that uh, you can help operate. But as you can see, going through this little switch back here, nice and gingerly and very, very comfortable and smooth and quiet as well. They are doing some really good things on this Impala with sound ending uh, material, that is for sure. All right guys, let's check out the power on this V6, rolling out on throttle. You're actually getting a pretty decent sound from the back of the car. Um, zero to 66 seconds, transmission being a six speed, it did take quite a bit of time for it to drop down to get us up and rolling. But once we were up and rolling, very smooth, the shifts were very seamless. Visibility is great. And I really do like the dash setup in here. I, I think it's a bad move for them to kill this car off. I mean, I know not as many people are buying sedans anymore, but give people a reason. If you give them a reason, they will come and buy it. If you build it, they will come. Remember that Field of Dreams? Kevin Costner, they got it right. Why can't Chevrolet do that? Especially with a hollowed name like Impala. But hopefully this gives you quite a little bit of little view of the Impala, making a U-turn nice and easy on throttle. Like I said, it takes a second to drop down. I don't like that. It needs to be a little bit more instantaneous, but very smooth, like I said. Um, and really this is a car that you could drive across country, not an issue, not an issue. Vision out the back, really good. Visibility is great, it's comfortable. But we're gonna go ahead and get back to Moss Family Chevrolet and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right guys, been pretty amazing with this Chevy Impala. Should Chevrolet kill this car off? I'm gonna say no. I think if they would take it to the next level redesign, put a V8 in it, rear wheel drive, I think really you got a winner there. But if these are the types of things you like to see on Randy's Rides, leave a comment in the comment section. I definitely got to thank Ricky and everybody here at Moss Family Chevrolet being so accommodating, giving us full access. If you are new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being a member of the Radies Rides family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you on Radies Rides, click the link in the description. It takes you right to Spreadshirt. Get yourself some Radies Rides merch. We got the all new Zonk shirts. Speaking of helping out, Tom. Big Guns McGee, he gets bigger and bigger as each day goes by, stronger mentally and physically. So Tom, keep doing the good work. Check him out on Instagram, at Photos, And just like always, I'll see you on the next ride.